everybody, Evan and Michael here with your Mayor of March, Butler Blue the Fourth, and it is time for a little show that we like to call Mascotology. And here we are. Thank you for joining us on Mascotology. Again, I'm Michael Kaltenmark, assistant to the deputy mayor of March, Butler Blue the Third. Recently retired, but brought out of retirement to be the deputy mayor to that guy, Butler Blue the Fourth, the mayor of March. Evan, absolutely. Again, I'm Evan here with your mayor of March, the distinguished, the honorary Butler Blue the Fourth, and we are just elated that March is here in Indianapolis. That's right, and we have some special guests joining us this March for Mascotology. Coming to us live from Chicago, this Wolverine is a writer for The Athletic, recently named the 2020 National Sports Writer of the Year, but you likely know her as the mom of Red Auerbach, and no, that's not the cigar-smoking head coach of the Boston Celtics, but this menacing 10-pound Yorkie Bichon mix, yes, it's yes. Nicole Auerbach. Welcome, Nicole and Red. Hi, thanks for having us. And, and you know, Red does have a lot of Butler apparel to the point that some of my Michigan friends are a little concerned that he has lost his allegiance. They should be. They should be very concerned. We're going to make a Bulldog out of Red, for sure. Well, coming up next, speaking of Bulldogs, all the way from his couch, we have the fighting leprechaun, ESPN analyst, the bachelor expert, Bulldog uncle, known for his hot takes, but even hotter outtakes, we couldn't convince his dad to join us. So we got the next best thing is Mike Golick Jr., everybody. <laughs> My proudest title is 100% dog uncle. I wear many hats, but one of my proudest, most recent, and certainly beefiest belongs to my sister and her bulldog puppy. So happy to represent for the Golick family here. Even happier to get to stare at bulldogs on a Zoom with a dopey smile on my face for as long as we do this. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. And last but not least, also joining us from the Windy City is Benny the Bulls, ride or die. Yes, our third guest is infamous around Chicago as the Can I Pet Your Dog guy, as well as the play-by-play -play voice of the Chicago Bulls, and a familiar face on Fox Sports, MLB, and NFL broadcasts. Also, rumor has it that this Valparaiso University grad has thrown his hat into the ring as his alma mater is considering a new mascot. Please welcome Mr. Adam Amin. Adam, welcome. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I don't know if my suggestion of the non-fighting but scrappy Amins as the mascot yeah. for Valparaiso <laughs> actually be applied. I'm not sure about that. Here's to hoping. <laughs> That's, I, I like it. I'm for it. I don't I'm get a vote, it. but I'm for it. I buy All right, it. let's talk about some mascots. Let's get on with mascotology, Evan. Absolutely. And with this show called Mascotology, we're not really focusing on actual basketball. That's what everyone else is talking about. We're here to talk about our furry friends, our ambassadors of these great teams, the mascots. So our first show segment, of course, has to be best of beef. So guess we know there's a lot of great mascots out there. 68 good boys and girls representing their schools coming to Indianapolis. But you know, it is March and only the big dogs make it to the end. So Nicole, I'm gonna start with you. Who is the best live mascot? in the tournament this year. So we're not talking the, the big head costume mascots. We're talking live, living, and breathing. Well, um, the one benefit to Butler not being in the field is there will be no personal slights to anyone present in this Zoom. So I feel a lot better about that. Um, even though I'm trying to picture them in a basketball arena and it's really not working, <laughs> I would say it's 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 Ralphie and 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 Bevo, right? Like it has to be. These are icons. They're enormous. These are more football mascots. These are more football schools, I would say. So we don't always have them in the big dance, but we do this year. I think the world deserves to see this photo that we're gonna pop on the screen. Trip's dad, Michael, he is a little hair challenge. So luckily in 2019, Ralphie did uh, donate some of her hair. To my I got a Ralphie hair. Mike, Ralphie. you might, might want to look into it. A Ralphie hair transplant. <laughs> the buffalo fur just really blends in nicely. It kept me warm. I, it was great. 
It's fantastic. I had no idea yeah. I was going to come here and find this solution to my longtime problem. This is already going really well. Leave it to mascotology. Great points made by uh, my esteemed colleagues. I will have to go in a different direction, though. There may be some bias here. When you walk into a basketball arena, there's nothing like being greeted by one of your furry four-legged friends. And one of my closest furry four-legged friends is Jonathan the Husky at UConn. Uh, and this is after years of doing many, many UConn games. Jonathan's handlers come over and bring Jonathan over. And Jonathan and I get to spend a couple of minutes of quality time together before we get to call another UConn basketball game. I understand that you're supposed to leave your your biases at the door in, in most broadcasts. I am not going to do that here. Say not on this show. No, sir. I mean, that's two for two. As far as friends of the Butler Blue Live Mascot Program, Ralphie and Jonathan, let's see if Mike can bring it home. Who you got, Mike? Best live mascot this year. Yeah, and so again, admitting our biases here, I know this is going to sound strange to a lot of people when I go out and cape for the mascot named Mike, but Mike the Tiger at LSU, to me, brings a ton to the table, almost literally when we talk about size here, but... Really chill guy. I appreciate. I feel like this chat especially will appreciate someone who knows the value of a good long nap, a great <laughs> stretch post nap, and just in general going through life with that air of confidence that says, I'm going to conserve energy for the moments where I really need it. And I think Mike embodies a lot of that. Three for three, friends of the Butler Blue Live Mascot Pro. It's like we handpicked these guests, Evan. No, we did. We did. No, we did. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, costume version mascots in this year's field. And we have some iconic ones, folks. Like you've got, let's see, Sparty, Bucky, Brutus, uh, Otto the Orange, Big Al. Oregon yeah. Duck. Who do Tom we like? Cougar. Let's go in reverse order. Mike, who do you like this year in a costume? Well, and Evan just said it. Cosmo Cougar is electric. I fell in love with the viral dance videos here. There are a lot of mascots that, like me, have body roles, but there is only one who can very, very effectively body roll, and that's Cosmo Cougar. Brings the heat each and every time here. That's a must-have in the field, and I'm glad he is representing this strong group of costume mascots. I wrote down two names for this. The Oregon Duck and Cosmo Cougar. This is going to be one of the harder decisions I, ha I, I think I have to, to come up with because social media angles locked in, right? The Oregon Duck, the adventures of the Oregon Duck. I want to know where the duck is. I feel like the, uh, the dance moves are, gonna, are, are what's going to give it to Cosmo Cougar. It's contemporary. He's got old school moves. There's, there's, a, there's a wonderful blend of old school and new school every time he dances. The Cougarettes, for BYU, all support and compliment Cosmo, and he does the same for them. The versatility is off the charts. I think I have to go with Cosmo Cougar. Who knew we'd get this sort of in-depth analysis on Matt? Did you talk to Benny the Bull before the show, Adam? I mean, yeah, it was a, it was it, we. I was on his podcast. Uh, oh. If you haven't checked out Benny's podcast, it's called Between Two Horns. Uh, <laughs> first episode is currently available on his SoundCloud. Nicole, best mascot in costume this year. Yeah, well, um, I am going to sound like a broken record because I also picked Cosmo. I This is how I know you picked the right people for this because I think that if you didn't have people who really understood the mascot community, you would have had people go with like Brutus. It would have been the, the really like obvious choices. And you have this image of BYU as being very stiff, right? And then you have this amazing dancing, edgy mascot, again, that's why we have the right people here, because we understand the culture and the context of Cosmo the Cougar. Evan, what do we got for our guys next? Well, I think we should just absolutely turn the tables, get out of this best discussion. Who's the worst? Who's the scariest? Now, luckily for us, the Providence Friars, they didn't make the tournament this year, but they're also sparing children's souls by not having to expose them to what is their mascot, the Friar? Nicole, we're going to go right back with you. Who is the most terrifying, ugliest, scariest? They should just reconsider everything and go back to the drawing board mascot in the tournament this year. Okay, well, yeah. I, I've got to start and just talk about the Friar for a second. There was nothing scarier than if you were there early before they let the fans in and you were just walking through a tunnel somewhere around the court and the Friar just popped up. I actually did a story last summer and I spoke to someone who had been the Friar for a few years and asked, like, did people react poorly to, to meeting you? Normally people are excited to meet the mascot. And he said that children sometimes cried. I, I think Purdue Pete has to be the winner 
for the current teams in this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that is a terrifying mascot. Terrifying. Why couldn't the, the, the kid who's Purdue Pete just not put on a hard hat and go, like, why does he have to put on a fiberglass? I think, I think that's part of it. It's also then the, the human legs. The, it that works. dynamic, it, it's, it's part of what makes it scary. Purdue Pete is a great choice, especially if you've looked at a photo of Purdue Pete from, like, the 1960s. It is nightmare fuel. I love going to Wichita. I, I absolutely love going to the Roundhouse, all right? I love going to Doodah Diner. I love Wichita, Kansas, more so than most people might. What scares me is when Wooshak is, like, over our shoulder when we're recording our open for television, and I look over, and it's just this, this like, corn husk of a person standing there staring at you with its dead eyes and weird bangs. The bad hair, the bad bangs had them at one point. So maybe it's just my own insecurities being projected out. But I will say when I go to Wichita and Wushak is there, it is, uh, it is a little bit of a tough time going to bed later that night. Wushak plan ain't nothing to mess with, is what Adam is telling us. Exactly. Mike, scariest for you in this year's big show. During my very, very brief time with the New Orleans Saints and their offseason program, I used to enjoy going over to the minor league baseball team right there formerly the Zephyrs that became the baby cakes. That giant, terrifying baby and its Scary. fiberglass head haunt yeah. my dreams to this day. And so for that reason, let's talk about Pistol Pete at Oklahoma State. What a terrifying face that thing is. <laughs> a couple fiberglass with the weird, like, five o'clock shadow. I get it. The gritty Western facial hair that's got to come with it. And he's armed. Like, all of this yeah. together <laughs> creates a really nightmarish scenario when Pistol Pete walks into the room. So, yeah, out on that guy. Out on uh, out on fiberglass Pete. You know, it, it, I think the Pete is the common thread here, and I think that we should ban mm. Pete. I respect this stance. I respect this stance. Wow. Him. I should add that the views of our guests do not reflect that of the Butler Blue Live mascot. <laughs> we love you, Pete. Last question of best of the beast before we move on to the next category. So Evan, take it away. If we got a mini speed round for you. You get one choice each. Uh, we're talking about our Mount Rushmore. We are going to build our combo Mount Rushmore. Uh, me and Michael have our choice already. Uh, so you three each get a pick. We're talking about looks. We're talking about origin, the history, its, it's contribution to America. Adam, we'll start with you. Uh, I think uh, the Oregon Duck deserves a spot. Uh, I think the success of the Oregon programs over the last 20 years in particular has brought to light to the modern culture, what the Oregon duck means. I think the Oregon duck was one of the first where we were really like this, this mascot has some swag, some confidence. And I think that's set the tone for mascots that have become more and more popular over the years. And I think that, I think as an OG type of swag mascot, I think the Oregon duck, for that reason, among others, deserves a spot on the Mount Rushmore. Part of this is, you know, I'm a Michigan alum. I can't necessarily go with Brutus. I do hope someone else has put him on the Mount Rushmore because he belongs there. But my choice is the Stanford tree. I think, first of all, we're talking about a Mount Rushmore, literal, like out in the world, a tree belongs. A tree can stay there and survive. <laughs> Also, just one of the weirdest looking. <laughs> As one of, I've called a million Stanford basketball and football games, and it creeps me out every time. More so when they put on the different types of uniform, like the the, the multicolored one, or like a very specific like theme uniform. But it's iconic. Again, part of what make mascots and college sports good is being weird incredible i love it i love it again the weirder the better i have not been as close physically to the tree as as adam has so maybe that is a different experience but again a mount rushmore it's far away it's existing in the world you can like you know drive your car to go visit it one of the greatest supporting argument bits today is going to be this is a literal mountain <laughs> trees would be able to survive there very well that was art I think these are all really great points here. I think these costumed mascots especially are an important part of the conversation. But if I'm going to go a live animal mascot here, Nicole was the first to utter his name. 
in this chat. So I will bring Bevo back here right now. Through Texas's varying levels of being back throughout the years, there has been Bevo, who is the literal physical representation of all the things people want to believe about the university. And Bevo just does it with kind of a chill air about him here. For a, a school and a brand as big as Texas, they somehow found the mascot that is effortlessly up to the challenge there. When I think of live mascots, I think of that large steer. We have the Oregon Duck. We have the Stanford Tree. And Bevo. Evan, who's yeah. rounding out the mascotology Mount Rushmore? I mean, the obvious choice is, is this mayor right here. But, you know, we decided that as the mayor of March, we are going to have to just let him be the park ranger who oversees the Mount Rushmore. Uh, we're going to have to give it to our good friend, Ralphie the Buffalo. There is nothing more iconic than hearing this giant buffalo stampeding through the one of the most gorgeous football stadiums with a, a actual mountain behind it making a u-turn scaring the literal bejesus out of the opposing team and then running into a trailer and going home the iconicness the fact that there are five people trying just to keep up with them and actually they have a regiment of varsity level workouts that they go through on a weekly basis for their sole duty of slowing down a Buffalo iconic. You can't beat it. Colorado Ralphie. She's on our list. Ralphie erroneously labeled as a male often. Ralphie is a she let's not forget. Um, also, I think that the, there should be extra credit for mascots that probably shouldn't be anywhere near sporting events and lots of people. Like it just yeah. doesn't fundamentally make any sense. Guard your small <laughs> children. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our mascotology, Mount Rushmore, just to recap here, we have Ralphie and Bevo. And then we take a turn. We add a duck, the Oregon duck. And we round things out with the Stanford tree. So there you are, your mascotology, Mount Rushmore for 2000. Why was there so much disgust? <laughs> there was. There was, there was disdain there. There was a lot of judgment in that. Nicole, my dog lifts his leg on trees, but... Anyway, uh, let's move along. This year's mascot matchups. Matchups are the glue that holds this whole thing together. So we are going to be breaking down what we think are some of the best mascot versus mas mascot matchups coming up. Again, basketball actual out the window. We're talking the furry friends, the pistol peeps, all of that. We have Drake with Griff the second, also known as George, as well as Wichita Stakes Wushok, which Adam, you do say is terrifying, but also that might be playing a big factor there. What's your take on this matchup? Yeah, I, I think you're right, Evan, honestly. It's uh, to, to match up Wushok, again, just a husk of wheat, just a muscular husk of wheat uh, with, with some weird bangs and some dead eyes and a, and, and a nose. So I respect its prowess. I respect the fear that it may kind of push into uh, another individual. I think George has, there's this idea that these dog mascots are all lovable and they are, they're all loving and caring. They are, but I don't think you can yet yeah, see well, trip gets it. Uh, I don't think you can Is test that a cardboard cutout of trip. Maybe. I mean, right now, right. Yeah, I, for a second, bored Nicole, I had to look again. I had to look twice <laughs> because, for, because earlier he was there eating a bone and then the cardboard cutout just showed up and I, I didn't register it right away, so I had he to. He got somewhere else to be, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> he got bored with the show. He's retired. That's very yeah, important. Is, yeah, that's true. You can't ask him to commit to this. No. Yeah, listen, he's got a schedule. You don't want to mess with George when he's backed into a corner. So I have a good feeling about our buddy Griff the Second, aka George, in, in this matchup. When I did the story about mascots in quarantine, learned a lot about George's yoga. Um, was doing a daily yoga post. Um, really an excellent downward dog form for this dog. And I think also was often doing it in Halloween costumes, seemed to have an incredible wardrobe. These are things that matter when you're talking about a mascot matchup. It's not just for show with Griff, he truly lives it. And no, live he's in life. his rookie season himself. So he's got the young talent, the dexterity. I think that's the right choice. I think also <laughs> in the first four, um, Michigan State fans might be a little salty. Uh, they're playing in the first four. I think they think they should be a little higher up, but they will be playing a Thursday playing game as well. Uh, Sparty, one of the most iconic mascots, I think, that there is. Um, facing off against UCLA, Joe Bruin. What do you guys have a take on that matchup? Unfortunately for UCLA, Joe, when I look at 
costumed animals here and I look at the bear kingdom specifically, I have such a high standard for this after going and visiting Baylor when uh, they were the host for college game day a couple of years ago. You want to talk about a bear with a fitness regimen. And that's what I worry about here is Joe just doesn't have enough meat on the bone when it comes to this versus our guy Sparty over here. He has been in the basement lifting weights and doing pre-workout all morning, getting ready for this occasion here. He comes ready for this one. And I feel like there's just no stopping that steamroller of a man. But, but here's the thing. Sometimes I worry about Sparty that he focuses too much on, oh, what do I think is going to look cool if I flex or like, am, you know, kind of just taking my shirt off around the lady mascot somewhere. You know, I think so that to me is where I worry. Like is, is Sparty as strong as Sparty looks? I don't know. Because sometimes, Mike, you know, well, maybe it's, it's, it's pets. Mike, Mike knows about this based on some of the <laughs> folks I imagine he's he's interacted with in his in his football days. Some 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 dudes got real strength and some dudes got show muscles. But remember, the winner it doesn't really matter because the winner of this game goes up against Cosmo. Cosmo! I mean the rap. The rap. The rap. It's a wrap. No stopping Sparty until he faces that cougar. In the West region, number seven versus number 10, you know, Rodney the Ram, they are playing uh, Oregon and the Oregon Ducks. I'll, I'll start with this because obviously I have an affinity for the Oregon Duck. I've already discussed the duck. I put him on the Mount Rushmore of mascots. That does not mean that that automatically translates to guaranteed success. That's not the case. If you look at double zero, Rodney Ram, all right? Rodney the Ram's got the jersey on. They made him part of the team. They gave him a number that would actually be used in a basketball game. There, that's a mean-looking Ram. Uh, I think the eyes kind of tell you a major story. The Oregon Duck has very soft eyes, kind, just gentle. You, you, you want to give the Oregon Duck a hug. This is Rocky running into Clubber Lang now. Like, Rodney the Ram, this is the first meeting between Rocky and Clubber Lang, and I feel like Rodney the Ram's got a little Mr. T in him. There's pain. Pain is on its way with Rodney the Ram. This is fair. I mean, what this is what we paid for in analysis, Evan. Zero dollars. But it was fair. The guy who loves the you are, Ducks. You are, you are absolutely getting what you paid for. We are. Let's, hey, let's move to the East. The East has got a couple nice battles. Uh, who wants to pick this one up? Number five, Colorado's Ralphie. Oh, Number 12, Georgetown Jack. Okay. This one hurts. I... Lived in D.C. for two and a half years. Got to see Georgetown Jack personally. Elite. Just totally elite. I mean, there are some great Bulldogs in the Big East, as you guys know. Um, this is just, again, an iconic matchup of live mascots. We have talked about Ralphie and Ralphie's place in mascot history. And I'm just picturing Ralphie next to a Bulldog. And to me, that is what college sports is about. And I think that you can't picture them fighting, physically fighting, but you got to think about like the strengths and weaknesses of both. So I, again, I think it's very tempting to just go, I mean, obviously I'm going to go with the Buffalo in this matchup because it is a really large size difference. Um, but I do think that we are underrating the strength in numbers of having other Bulldogs in other parts of the country coming together to support Georgetown Jack. I would like to ask Nicole one follow-up. Uh, does the Bevo Ugga Sugar Bowl dust up, does that give you any pause for this Ralphie? Actually, uh, that is, you know, that is a good point. I think that that should show that these fights are more even than you might. Okay. Think. Yeah. Just for a second. I think Blue needs to rock out the <laughs> Ralphie head. I love that so much. There wow. You go. <laughs> there it is. I mean... I'm, I'm legitimately emotional looking at that. <laughs> I know. I think not I might even, shed a tear. I actually am I'm tearing up a little bit. I, I'm not kidding. I teared up when we got on the Zoom. Oh. <laughs> We've really oh. uncovered some things with Adam today. <laughs> this mascot together. Um, we should do this weekly, I think, with him. Um, and also in the East, another great mascot matchup. Number seven, UConn. So getting back at Adam's old friend, Jonathan the Husky versus number 10, Marilyn Testudo. What do you think? I, I, I really don't have anything for this. It's, this is this Jonathan matchup by the mile. Don't get me wrong. Like, good for you. I appreciate, I appreciate your turtles and your terrapins. They're, they're frightening turtles, but this is, this is a no contest for me. 
the the piercing husky gaze just get lost in those eyes they're like deep pools of wisdom the knowledge of the universe is in those eyes i love the concept of a turtle as, as a mascot because i think mike loxley has renamed their football stadium the shell which i think is a pretty elite nickname yeah. for a home stadium um, so it does allow you to do certain things. It has, you know, lots of little traditions, like you rub the like bronze turtle testudo, like when you're going camp, it's like, there's a lot of cool elements. Um, but I do think it's clear uh, by this point in this conversation, we are very partial to live mascots. See? Buddy! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hello, very good. friend. So hard, hard, to, hard to pass up, Jonathan. It just great, <laughs> great eyes. Great eyes for our buddy, Jonathan. Sorry, turtles. Um, you know what? I think this might be another round here. In the South, we have number eight versus number nine, which is always a big matchup, no matter what. But we have UNC Ramses. Now, I want you all to remember, and our viewers at home, there are two Ramses. There's the stuffed version that looks like a pale version of Rodney the Ram, but then they have an actual Ram Ramses going against one of the most iconic and social media icons, Bucky Bad. So I appreciate live Ramsey's painted blue horns, really committing to the bit here, a, a great ambassador for the school. But I, I don't want to underrate this about Bucky either, because he, like stuffed Ramsey's, has the eyes that let you know he's very upset. He's very intimidating. He's very serious about what's about to happen here. Ramsey's doing it in a basketball jersey. Bucky is doing it in a turtleneck. Do you know how difficult it is to be active and angry indoors because we're playing basketball in a turtleneck? That's a level of sweat and itch that you've got to tolerate all the time that I have a feeling is going to fuel performance in a way that people aren't accurately always recognizing. And so Bucky, turtlenecks, I, I, I got to go with that dub here regardless of a two mascot combo on the other side. Part of the reason I think that Bucky is so iconic is because for so long he looked just like his head coach. Like I think there was no one who matched their mascot better than Bo Ryan and Bucky the Badger. And I think that that probably contributed to those final four runs. But also I think in terms of like mascot lore, it matters if you do look like your head coach. Okay, well, let's just let's keep rolling here in that South region. Uh, seven and ten, always a good opportunity for an upset. But we have Albert Gator, uh, the iconic Florida Gator. Now, he does have Alberta Gator um, as well. So another one-two hit versus Hokey Bird. Mike, I know we have we have friends that, that are, are big Hokey fans that would be very upset if we picked against Hokey Bird. I'm going to pick against Hokey Bird. Here's why. Birds run well, right? Birds have, have quickness, agility, side to side, lateral movement. Very, very good. Always. Gators, though. You got it. You got a zigzag, right? Because they're more straight line. So this this is a this is a a very interesting physical matchup that we're talking about. Gator against Hokey Bird. If you got two Gators, though, you, th this is the only way I think you take down Hokey Bird. You, you need you need something to be able to surround. You need a combination to be able to surround an athletic, agile bird. And I think Albert and Alberta, with their powers combined. I think have a major opportunity to take that. How agile is the hokey bird though? Because I feel like the emoji that is often used is a turkey. <laughs> turkeys yeah. are, do, yeah, do you feel like, do you feel like turkeys are hard to catch? I, I, I don't I've know. We eat them. Them. So people are clearly catching them pretty easily around Thanksgiving. It's a fair point. It's fair. You know that. So again, I, I, wonder what, no I, I think that that goes to your point though, about how you could easily surround and contain. I, I feel like that's a, that's a key factor. Also, put some pants on, man, or put a shirt on, Hokey Bird. What are you doing? Just 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 clothesless, just nude nude bird running around constantly at all times. Speaking of clothes, we got to talk about it again. Everything I just said about Bucky, Albert's wearing a turtleneck in Florida. Ooh. You don't what want a weapon is going to win. No weapon formed against a swamp living turtleneck wearing alligator shall prosper i'm sorry that's madness to wear it in that climate i've been down to florida i've been in the swamp that is not a place i would even think of saying the words turtleneck let alone putting one on and then trying to go out there for three and a half hours on a hot saturday or inside a packed gym in no thank you <laughs> i'm struggling okay We're let's go down to our last uh, uh mascot matchup going to the midwest uh, region we have number five 
Tennessee's Smokey versus number 12, the Oregon State, Benny the Beaver. Thoughts on this one? I think Smokey is underrated. I mean, I feel like when we talk about live animal mascots, we sometimes forget about Smokey. And there's all sorts of insane stories about Smokey being kidnapped and rescued and like in history of rivalries. I think that 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 toughens you up as a mascot when you have been the subject of kidnapping. Smokey is uh, Smokey's been around a little bit. Smokey knows what's up. Smokey's seen the world, the good and the bad. So there's a lot there's a lot of wisdom there. And, and I feel like I, I've kind of channeled some of Nicole's energy because researching Smokey, because we're on Smokey 10 right now in the current iteration of this mascot. And I found out two things. One, to the worldly aspect there, Smokey is a married man. He is partnered for life. And I believe they've already started a family. And so for a married man to, on occasion, live at the frat house on the weekends the way that he does, to stay overnight there is a braver man than I, bold in ways that maybe border on too much, but also found out that when Smokey was two months old, he was 26 pounds, which means he was a full-blown chonk. And that is why they picked him because he was the biggest of the litter and they knew they had their dog. I don't need to, I I think, state the obvious that we in this chat support chonky dogs. And so Smokey being a baby chonk feels very, very appropriate here. I I think Smokey, uh, two words, thick king. (laughs) Thick king is right. Uh, This thick king and that thick king go way back. Actually, there was a meetup. Uh, with Trip and uh, Smokey back in the day. So we, we like that pick. We're going with it. And that, my friends, is going to do it for mascot matchups. All good things must come to an end. Before we say goodbye, let's wrap up with a little game we like to call Fast Break. Friends, Evan here is going to call on you to answer some of the most ridiculous questions he could think of. We infamously call these Evan questions around the house and the office. So, Evan, they've been warned. They're all yours. Let's hear it. Let's do it. We're going to start. We're going to go in order. Starting with you, Adam, uh, which head coach currently resembles their team's mascot the most? Man, this is this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to say Rick Pitino and the Iona Gales. I, I think maybe it's, it's Pitino's been around for a while. He's returned. He's, he's he's flown to a new new home. Killian's got the uh, like the Abe Lincoln beard to him. I was almost with Adam on that one until I factored in the beard. This one's for you, Mike. Uh, in an open field foot race, who would you put your money on, Ralphie the Buffalo or Tusk the Razorback? So this is why I did the research and the question, and I found out. All right, so a buffalo can get up to thirty-five miles an hour. And Tusk, a Razorback, can get up to 30 miles an hour. But I have to ask what the distance is here because I feel like it's going to take Ralphie a little while longer to get going. If this is a 100-yard dash, I'm going to put my money on Ralphie here. Tusk might have a shot if we're talking about getting like the first 10 of your 40 time in this just because smaller, a little easier to get the wheels going on that one. But I'm probably going to side with, with, with Ralphie. I don't think it's ever wrong to be strong, and I think that kind of power is always going to be a benefit. So, Nicole, uh, a very serious question I want to just to bring home to you. Um, if you could ride one mascot into battle, which one would you choose? Well, so it dep- dep- depends what kind of battle, right? Like, again, we've talked about Sparty. If, if we're talking about, like, going to war, I, I do want someone who has experience in that setting. Um, and you know, you can physically probably get a good piggyback ride. Um, But I think, you know, in general, it's got to be Mike the Tiger. I mean, assuming that he doesn't eat you, that's got to be the ultimate weapon, the ultimate carrying card for for battle and war and war against other animals. I I like the idea of, like, Nicole brought him up earlier, Mario the Magnificent. Like, if Game of Thrones taught us nothing, it's that riding in dragons is infinitely cooler than almost anything else and usually highly effective. You know, this is just the content people are going to not pay to see. I love it. Um, you know, I think we're just going to go back to you, Adam. I, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous to ask this question just because you've already given us so much deep insight. But if you were forced to spend a full day, a working day in another college's costume, which one would you choose? I, I wouldn't pick the Stanford tree because, again, even in the different iterations of the costume, there's a lot of, like, open space. You're very vulnerable in the tree Adam, do you, think you're, do you think you're too short to be the tree anyway? I'm probably too short to be the tree because there's – I'd probably topple. It's probably top-heavy. I'd, I'd be very angular. It's not enough support on the top. It'd probably flop over at one point. 
like what like a Scrooge hat. I think I, it should be puddles. I think I think I think puddles is a good choice. Puddles is a good choice because I think there's a lot of protection there. Because <laughs> as as you guys as you guys have discussed, it's based off Donald Duck. Donald Duck has has some junk in the trunk and a little <laughs> bit of fluff in the in the stomach area. I think I would feel very safe. What two mascots would you pit against each other for the high end pay per view? wrestling match i feel like based on what we've talked about here sparty and rodney the ram similar body types here we talked about what they bring to the table like the attire here is important and while they both have a very set uniform i feel like if you showed them like a leather like the leather speedo that you see in a lot of these these guys come correct here they're both ready to fight battles clearly in their blood and i feel like you could put them in a cage it could be a lot you know shoots and ladders match whatever you want here these guys are up for you know what nicole let's just bring it home saint elmo's not a sponsor of the show but you know what maybe next year uh iconic scenes of parks and recreation uh known as the best steak but also the best spiciest shrimp cocktail you have to put a mascot against joey chestnut in a cocktail shrimp eating contest which live mascot or costume mascot are you choosing to take him on Okay, so my initial thought is, again, Mike the Tiger um, for just the speed um, of eating. And then I would also potentially look at, you know, I think the dragon is an interesting um, wow here because if we're talking about, like, it's really spicy, it's really hot, who can better absorb that than a dragon, yeah. right? So I think it's got to be between those two in my mind. Oh, this is the best. No, that's, that's, I think that that's exactly where your head needs to be at for an answer like that. Cause it, cause it, the, the sauce, it, it opens up the, the yeah, it clears, clears and, out. And, and Mike, I think Mike would eventually come around, but it'd be like that scene in Bloodsport where John Claude Van Damme <laughs> gets the salt thrown in his eye and he has to like figure out where he's at for a second. I think the sauce might hit Mike very quickly. Whereas Mario would be like, I eat this for breakfast, literally. Yeah. I will say we learned in the hangover that tigers love pepper and hate cinnamon. So if we're going to go with a similar like spice profile here, I don't know if Mike would be as averse to that as we're saying. Certainly not on the level of the dragon who literally clears his sinuses with fire. So there's a definite <laughs> step up in the weight yeah. class there, certainly. But Well, uh, we uh, made it to blood sport and the hangover. So I think that's going to do it uh, for mascotology. Uh, we're certain that you learned nothing and uh, hope that you laughed a little bit. Enjoy our expert analysis from the likes of our special guests, Nicole Auerbach, Adam Amin, and Mike Gullick Jr. Thanks for joining us today. Evan, Absolutely. any parting thoughts? Uh, I guess. Sure. Uh, may your mascots be lucky. May your march be absolutely maddening. And may you follow this dog on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at the Butler Blue because look at that freaking face. For Michael, Evan, uh, Butler Blue the third, Butler Blue the fourth, and our special guest. Thank you so much for watching Mascotology. We'll see you out there. Have a great day.